In this video, I will discuss the process of journalizing economic transactions by the company. So I'll first start with the accounting equation, and then we'll go and work some practice problems to illustrate the, uh, the steps of the journalizing process. So the accounting equation is we have our assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And this equation should hold at any moment in time within the company. We can break the accounting equation down further. Or we can expand it. Owner's equity is the sum of common stock and retained earnings. And retained earnings can further be broken down into so this equation must hold at the end of every period. And so retained earnings at the end of the period is equal to retained earnings at the beginning of the period plus net income during the period minus the dividends paid during the period. And finally, we can expand net income. So net income is the difference between the revenues and the expenses. So revenue minus expense is net income. And so this is the accounting equation. This equation is the same as this equation. It's just this bottom one is the complete expansion of the top one. And if you look here, there are six categories of accounts. So all the company's accounts can be grouped into six categories. Assets, liabilities, these two common stock and beginning return, beginning return earnings, those owners And then we have revenues and expenses and then dividends. So companies they use accounts to keep track of their economic transactions. And any account the company uses is either an asset, a liability, an owner's equity, a revenue, an expense, or a dividend account. So there's six categories. Uh, we can make an acronym to help remember the categories. Dealer. Dividends, expenses, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, and revenue. So these are the six categories. So an account that a company has is generally um, summarized in the form of a T. So let's take, let's take an asset account. An example would be cash. Cash, so this, is what, this right here is what is known as a T account. This is what the company uses to summarize all the transactions that happen that involve cash during the period. Any account the company has, again, is one of these six categories. And whatever the account is, you can, you can view it as a T account. The left-hand side of the T account, so when we make an entry on this side, we're, that means we're making an entry on the debit side. So the left-hand side of the T account is defined as the debit side. So debit in financial accounting means, and only means, the left-hand side of the T account. When we make an entry on the right-hand side, we, we say we make a credit. So the right-hand side of the T account is the credit side. So debit in financial accounting is defined as the left-hand side of the T account and credit is defined as the right-hand side of the T-account. Now let's get to the rules of debit and credit. <clears throat> right. Debit often is given the abbreviation DR. <clears throat> and credit is given the abbreviation CR. So here are the rules. 
and they're based on this acronym. There's a separation here. Accounts which are dividend, expense, or asset accounts. These accounts, they all, to increase them, to make them go up in value, you debit them. And to make them go down in value, you credit them. Accounts that are liabilities, owner's equity, or revenue accounts. So any account that falls in one of these three categories, it's the opposite. For these T accounts, to make them increase in value, you credit them. And to make them decrease in value, you debit them. Why? There's no explanation for why. These are just the rules. Much like a definition is the definition of a word. Why is it the definition? Just because we say it is. We all agree. For, for the same reason, that's why these rules are the way they are. So you just have to memorize the rules. All right. Now let's think about, for a given economic transaction, uh, well, let's look at a journal entry first. Let's, let's define what a journal entry is. So when we say, when we use the phrase journalize, or, yeah, journalize an economic transaction, what do we mean? What does that phrase mean? It means to make a journal entry journal entry we often abbreviate journal entry as just j.e and what is a journal entry here's an example journal entry a journal entry for a given economic transaction you put the date that the transaction occurred so let's say January 31st 2020 and then you make a debit into it in, a, in at least one account and you make a credit in at least one account depending on the accounts that are involved in the transaction so if the company suppose they buy supplies from a supplier and in exchange they give cash to the, to the supplier then the two accounts involved are supplies and cash so in an example the journal entry would look like this. You would debit supplies. Let's say the supplies were $200. You would debit supplies for $200 and you would credit cash for $200. And then, so you can see the account that's debited is always listed on top. And the account that's credited is always put on bottom and indented to the right. Debit's always on top. This is the debit. Credit is always on the bottom and indented to the right. And then finally, we would put like a one sentence description to let the reader of this journal entry know what this is representing. Purchased supplies for cash. So we got supplies in exchange for giving up cash. And so this right here is the journal entry. Now often in this class, um, we just care about this part. This is the only thing that's tested. Yes, you need the date. Yes, you put a description. But knowing how to make the entry as far as what account is debited, what account is credited, that's, that's what we're testing. In, in addition to making this journal entry, the company will also go in the supplies T account and in the cash T account it will go summarize so supplies was debited for 200 remember debit is always the left hand side of the T account and cash was credited for 200 credit is always the right hand side of the T account 
And so this would summarize what happened. This is the journal entry right here. And these are the entries in the T accounts. So let's go through the steps of journalizing the transaction. All right, first step, identify which accounts are involved. In this above example where the company purchased $200 worth of supplies in exchange for cash, the two accounts involved are supplies and cash. Example supplies and cash. Keep in mind every economic transaction involves at least two accounts, which means implies that every journal entry involves at least one debit and at least one credit. And the debits always have to equal the credits. All right. For each account, determine what type of an account is it using this acronym. Is it a dividend account? Is it an expense account? Is it an asset account? Is it a liability, an owner's equity, or revenue account? So put each account into its correct category. And so, for example, the two accounts are supplies and cash in, this, in the example we're doing, and they're both assets. So supplies is an asset. Cash is an asset. All right, let's go to the next add another page here. All right. Step three. For each account involved in the transaction, determine determine if the account should increase in value or decrease in value based on the the transaction. So in this example, the company purchased supplies for cash. So supplies should increase in value because they just got some supplies. And um, they gave up cash to get the supplies, so cash should decrease in value. And then finally, um, I could make five steps, but I can just summarize the last two steps in one step. So we'll just say the fourth step is to, um, how do I want to say it? Make the journal entry. Make the journal entry using the rules of debit and credit. which were right here. So both supplies and cash are assets. For ass and we and we determined in step three, so in step two we determined supplies and cash are assets. In step three we determined that both accounts or supplies I'm sorry should go up and cash should go down, just based on the context of what happened. So 
Which account do we debit? Which account do we credit? They're both assets. To make supplies an asset go up, we have to debit supplies, according to the rule. To make cash, which is an asset, go down, we have to credit cash. So we'll debit supplies and credit cash, which is what we did right here. So this would be the journal entry right here. Notice that the debits equal the credits. There's at least one debit and one credit. This has to happen every time you make a journal entry. So that's it. For every economic transaction, if you follow these four steps to making the journal entry, you should get the correct journal entry. This is the journal entry. If I said put um, update the T accounts, then you would go and make a T account for each. And you would put $200 in the supplies T account on the left hand side, because the left hand side is always the debit side, and we debited supplies here. Remember in the journal entry, the debit account is always on top, and the credit is always on bottom, indented to the right. And then we'd put $200 on the right hand side of the cash T account, the credit side. 